Michael, why don't you think people in the marketplace picked up on this trend until you reported it today? Well, I, I guess, you know, yesterday's results were strong, and it certainly demonstrates that Aurora is on the right track. We started to deliver against our reset plan that we announced back in February, and it put us squarely on a path to profitability. We announced cost cuts and CapEx spending that was in line with guidance. We've delivered above average growth. And we've maintained leadership in key market segments. And maybe most importantly, we've cleaned up our balance sheet. We've renewed our ATM, really just as a prudent measure. But we believe we have the resources today on our balance sheet to deliver on our key objective. And that is driving this company to near-term profitability. And I can see why that has investors more reassured than the fact that there was maybe some stockpiling, because as we know, stockpiling can be reversed. You know, it can help you, but then it can create an overhang where demand is lesser for a period of time. So maybe the longer term positive is this idea about profitability. Why has this been such a difficult period for all of the cannabis companies? Yeah, you know, there was huge interest in these stocks. They absolutely exploded. And then speaking of, again, there's been this nasty overhang um, for the last couple of years. Do you, is it capacity? Is it pricing? Is it, you know, regulation? What do you think is contributing to your profitability outlook now? Well, I think, look, the, the view, the, the long-term view of our industry hasn't changed. I think the path to getting there is very different. So what it's forced companies like Aurora to do is to take a step back and actually rationalize the business where it is today. And so that was the design around why we announced our reset plan. It was very important to, you know, to put our business uh, at a spending level that made sense today to give us the ability to sort of drive to profitability. This is about building strong fundamentals into our business uh, and delivering sustainable uh, profits going forward. And we believe that's a strong foundation for which we can grow going forward. We spoke with Scott's Miracle Grow yesterday, and, uh, you know, they had some... Some, in some ways, a good plan uh, to kind of work through the, the pandemic. They had put some thought into it, uh, were able to kind of mobilize the workforce quickly. Um, it, th that was peak season for Scott's, obviously, when this happened. Uh, I don't know in terms of the trends for you guys, but this must have been a real complication for your workforce. What has it been like? What, you know, what are your work levels like? Are you at full productivity? When do you expect to be back there? So we're so fortunate. I mean, cannabis was declared an essential service uh, in Canada. So what that's allowed us to do is to maintain full operations throughout. Our employees have been tremendous, and, and I owe a deep amount of gratitude to our, our employees. We put together a, uh, a response team, a, a COVID response team, that has really worked very closely with our employees across all of our facilities to ensure they're safe, to ensure that we, you know, we've given them the protective equipment that they need and to really communicate with our employees to understand what is it that they need to do to first feel safe and to ensure that we can continue to remain fully operational. And we have. And that's why we've really been able to sort of deliver the results that we had anticipated is because we have very clearly been able to, you know, to, 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 to manage our operations in this uncertain environment um, and, and remain fully operational. And we feel very proud of it. Well, Michael, we thank you for joining us today as you continue to navigate this. Thank you. Michael Singer is interim CEO of Aurora Cannabis. The shares, Tyler, are up 75% today.